Ze hebben ook nog een keuze De sir, een auto gaat de stuur maken. Waar? Please, I'll tell you questions. I'm in a contribution. Just for 10, 15 minutes at most. But before that, she really did use the, uh, the panel. The 30 seconds worth of cameras already. So, could you let me know what you have lost? Okay, so, um, my name is Kenton Kunte. I do many different things. Um, teach chess, uh, gardening. Um, I work for a voluntary organization that um, basically supports parents or carers of SEN, special educational needs and disabilities. So if there is anyone um, in the room who's got a child of SEN or knows anyone with a child of SEN, um, if you give me your details afterwards, I'll put you on our mailing list. And also we've got an event on... <laughs> yeah, but basically that's it, that's me. That's the kind of stuff that I'm into. That's a big Hello everybody, my name is Lorraine, um, I, uh, I'm not quite sure what to say about myself really, um, what I do is um, I'm, I'm multifaceted, I've got lots of different faces, I do lots of different things, um, I work for myself, I also work for an organisation, alright okay, um, and I'm really just here today to, to help um, with the issue that we've got um, at hand. And you've heard from me already, I'm here to uh, change people's consciousness, give them another way of looking at things and turn, turn talk into action. Uh, the science of etymology that you can actually apply to make it a reality. Thank you. I've also got some books available, Etymology, The Root of Words, and I run a speakers club which is developing our communication skills as well. Thank is there you. another mic there? Okay then. I'm going to ask Peter to come to the front please and just moderate this section. So has anybody got any burning questions they want to ask or think about the straw man? Yes, we have a sister. Please. Just... You want to put this one? Yeah. Check. Hello. Hi, hello. Right, you've talked about the etymology of the straw man and the meaning of the straw man, yeah? But how would you come out of that? Because as you say, we're born, we've signed the birth certificate, we are the straw. How would we come out of that? Okay. Um, so, to come out of it is, is obviously is a process. And the reason why it's a process is because there's many different um, loopholes that they have or many different um, system structures that they have in place to kind of get us in different ways so it's not like a necessarily a one thing is just going to kind of fix it unless you're getting your birth certificate and doing all things the way i've been doing it personally is i have um, restricted myself from being involved in the system so that would be not watching tv not paying my council tax not paying my water and then for some people you might be thinking well that's a bit risky yeah, in some ways, but then you do the research that makes you be able to understand how to deal with babies. So, you know, what their structures, I've been doing mine. There is other ways, better ways. That's why I'm hoping that there's people that are just as knowledgeable in this as I am, that we can all come together and start feeding each other more information, just like um, Jam has just done for me a minute ago, you know? That's my answer. Yeah, sorry, but is, is it about knowing your nationality, though, who you are? Um, I think at this point, the straw man movement that they have set up is so wide world that I don't know if it comes down to colour. Um, there's probably, in the Mason world, there's probably many black people involved in this thing will be up there high behind the scenes. So I don't know if it comes down to colour, although, um, as Jammer was saying before, we are the number one people that this system seems to be um, implemented for. That's my opinion. Yeah, does that answer your question, sorry? Well, what I'd like to, I'd like to say is something um, from my perspective. Yeah. I've done the nationality correction, name correction. I understand what you're talking about, and I've achieved the same sort of things that you're talking about. Yeah. Like I don't pay car insurance and all them sort of things and drive on the road. Yeah. So I'd love to talk to you and share what I understand from yeah. my perspective as a Mormon. Yeah. Yeah. So I've done it from that perspective. 
So I'm happy to share that knowledge with anybody that's interested. We'll give you the site that you can read for yourself. And if we meet up, we can all discuss and that's it. share the ideas yeah. and help people come along. Because I'm at a point where I'm happy, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy because yeah. I don't pay certain things. Yes. And yeah. I can still try to move up, 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 and up. You know what I'm saying? But I really want to help people come up yeah. and share that knowledge. But they've got to make their own choices, though. You get know what I'm saying? That's for sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If you want to share knowledge with this brother, what's your name, brother? Pablo. Pablo. I've gone with the speech and some weather, but yeah, I'm not sure. Go on, carry on, brother. Now, anyone else have a another yeah, question? Anyone have a question? Yeah? You want to ask and who you hold on, hold on, hold on, sis. Good to hear the mic. So, what is like, say, a natural baseline that we can all start moving? How do you move yourself forward on the journey of this path? Um, is there anybody that can talk in terms of like, you know, you say you don't pay certain things. I mean, I don't pay certain Might things be because I just don't pay it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. Come for the panel. Come for the panel. Yeah. Come for the panel. Come for the panel. Come for the panel. Come for the panel. Go on, go on, you want to respond to the one job? Yeah, uh, the first thing what we have to do is uh, we have an awareness that they're in competition with us. If, if someone's a competitor, that means we have to form our own infrastructures. You can't trust your competitor to train them. You're going to train your children to lose by giving them lessons to lesson them. So basically, and if you look at the word lesson backwards, it's no selling ability. Look inside the word learn, you see the word earn. You have to work for somebody else. So this education system is one short letter of medication. So we have to now form an infrastructure and become our own authority. Because authority just means something, the writing skills. Another thing is the language system. They've, give, they've given us the language of a, a minority. Minority is not a number, it's a little child. So when we try to use this tongue in law or, or science or biology, you find this tongue doesn't work for you. So what, what we're doing with etymology is trying to counter the language system and when you recognize somebody, something, you call it into action. So when you know you're the authority, then you can plan differently. Sorry, can I just, I'm just standing because I find it easier to talk when I'm standing. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about sort of the journey because I know that we're, we're all at sort of different stages um, in this whole process. And what, one of the things that we have to remember is that we're here, you're a man, I'm a woman. And that's, that's the first thing. And just to give you an idea of how I got onto this journey, it's not about getting away with pain for anything, it's just about me living as a woman, you living as a man, and, and just having our rights as those individual people. Now, just I just want to say really, really quickly, my journey started as a simple... What's your name, sister? Lorraine. Okay? My journey started three years ago, four years ago, when... Um, uh, we all pay council tax, or we're all supposed to pay council tax, yeah? Okay, and what actually happened was, my driveway is quite long, so um, every time the dustbin men came, they kept putting my rubbish, my bins, at the end of my drive, so they'd go to where it was at the beginning, and then they would come and, and leave it at the end of my drive, so I'd have to get out of my car and, and, and pull the dustbin back to where it was, and they kept doing this, so I spoke to the council and I said, look, you know what, I'm not happy about this, I'm paying for council tax, and you know, they're not just not putting back the bins where they're supposed to go. Cut a very long story short, we kept going backwards and forwards, and I said, look, I've come to a decision, I'm no longer going to pay you for my bins. I'm happy to pay for everything else, but I'm not going to pay for the bill, for the bins. He said it doesn't work like that. Council tax covers libraries, this, that and the other, and if we all opt out because we don't use it, then nobody would use libraries. I understand that. I said, I, I get that completely. However, um, I'm not going to pay for my bins. That's it. Send me the bill and I'm not going to, I'm just not going to pay for my bins. He said, go to the website. 
and um, you know the website will explain where the money goes. I said, I don't want to know where the money goes. I just want to stop paying for the dustbin. That is it. That's all I want to do. Stop paying for the dustbin. He said, well, look, it doesn't matter if you're happy or not. It's a council tax, it's a tax, and that's what it is, and that's it. You've just got to pay it. I said, well, no, it doesn't work like that in my world. I said, at the end of the day, I go to work, I work very hard, and, uh, you know, if I'm going to pay for something, I want to know that I'm getting value for what I pay. So, this is, this is where I kind of got to, like, three years ago with it. Um, and uh, I stopped paying for my council tax, they did all this backwards and forwards writing, all this going to court, I mean it's a very long process what they did, but everything that I did was um, in writing. Now, one of the things during that time that happened, and it was on the radio, a radio station, there was a, a, a lady that was talking about um, just a similar sort of straw man empowering yourself sort of thing, and I went onto this course and um, it was like two days long, and the first thing that we learned was, uh, it was just a simple question, what is a bill? What is a bill? Just somebody tell me, what's a bill? What's a bill? What is it? Somebody that's requesting you for money. And we know what it looks like. We know that a bill, it's got like, you know, if you go into a shop, into an a, 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 a off license or whatever, if they give you a bill, you pick up a drink, um, the bill will have the drink and all these things, and then it will have the price, whatever it is, and, and, and you pay for what it is. What we find ourselves doing now, and we don't even think about it, we go around paying things like notices. They send us these things in the post called notices. What is that? What is it? What's a notice? Is that something that they can send you and demand money from? A notice? These are things that we need to, as people, start to be thinking about. And what I urge people to do is to just start looking at just what we're doing. Just look at, you know, the, the meaning of words is so important, I can't even tell you. Because what I always believe to be the meaning of a simple word is, is that's not what it means. For one word in the English language, which is so complex, one word, how many meanings has one word got? You know, it's got so many different meanings. And I just think we need to look at words a bit more. We need to understand the things that we're, we're doing um, as just individuals just existing on this plane. You know, we need to understand that, um, you know, a lot of the things that we deal with nowadays is all to do with contracting with people. Everything we do is a contract, it's a contract. You can negotiate everything. I negotiate everything. You know, I'm still learning. I'm not an expert by any means, but I feel a lot freer as a woman because I don't feel that I'm under their control. And just finally, before I pass this on, just one thing I want you to think about as well. Um, Say, for example, you own a big manor house, okay? Because I want you to understand where the government, what their actual position is, okay? Now, the government, now let's just say you own a big manor house and you've got like a, a big garden, you've got a cook, you've got all these people that assist you in your home, okay? Now, you find that this is too much to manage. So, what do you do? You go and you get some help. This is our government, okay? So you go and you get this government and you say, right, okay, I'm going to get them to come and look after all these things, okay? So you go out, you get the money, you give it to them, and then... So one day you go home, you go to work, and you come back in, and you go to walk up your stairs. And the woman that sweeps your stairs, because you've got loads of stairs in your house, this woman turns around and says, oh, excuse me, um, you need to give me £10 if you want to walk up your stairs. What would you say? What would you say? Give me £10 and walk up, uh, up the stairs. This is your, your person that you put in charge of your thing. Now, what this, what this is showing is how much we need to think and get your mind in the right place of our position. The government is not in charge of us. You are superior. You have put them in place. And anything that they do, you just need to make sure that they are doing things correctly. And so what I would say is that just get your mind right, look up things like contract law, look up things like what is a bill, just look up all these things that they put in place, just to kind of give you a bit more of an awareness of what they're doing. Thank you. Uh, what we have to do is we have to set up our own institutions, our own, our own infrastructures, where we, we, 
um, become proprietors. We just look at Wall Street, at Wall Street. You know, even though there's somebody around you who's trying to dictate, you can set up your own infrastructures where, where you can generate and, and assume power. Uh, what is there, there's a book open, there's a, if you want to sign your name to that book there, because that's what we're working, what we've done, we set up a, a company called the Mastermind Intelligence Centre. So we're working on a way that we can set up our own organisation, our own societies, and create a language structure, because once you know their language, then you can speak in their language and counteract the language. As, as the lady said, notice just means do you notice this, and if you recognise it, then you make it a reality. Contract is, means counteract, means you're, counter, you, you're acting against your own self when you sign your nature away, because signature means you recognise the sign of the notice. So if you don't sign it, that means you're not giving the authority to the thing because you have not noticed the sign and you've not signed your nature to the thing that they want you to notice. The only way somebody can have power over a belief is if you recognise they have a belief. When they ask you for your name, they're asking you to give them your name. You know, Bailiffs came to my door and asked, asked for me and I said, he's, he's just left. <laughs> they didn't recognise me and I said, he owes me money as well, so when you see him, ask him. <laughs> that, that means they don't recognise you. You see, the only way they can recognise you if you if you, rec if you if you if you if you give them recognition. A car works with ignition. So recognition is when you're giving ignition to turn the cog back to you. Really to go to go back. Cog means to turn. Ignition means you're igniting them to turn back to you. Once you recognise them, you're allowing them to come forward. So the first thing you can't recognise the belief system. Just recognise your own authority. Okay. I'm Okay, okay. We've got, we've got two more questions. Does anyone want to ask a question? Let's get your hands up. No, I'm going to ask a question now. Oh, you want to? Okay, we'll, we'll come to you, bro. Straw man. We've had this, I've heard all this stuff about the straw man. You mentioned the loop or two. You don't pay for this. You mentioned you don't pay for that. I'm sure some people in the audience will want to know what they can get away with when it comes to payments. How does the straw man affect you legally from a legal perspective? That's a question I'm interested in. What, what I'd say is, the problem is, is our names. Our names is the problem. Yeah, so like you said, so if I ask you what's your name, you probably don't tell me your name, thinking that it's innocent. Because we're, we're truthful people, we're honest people. We like to tell the truth. But they're using that against us. So I'll come up to you and say to you, what's your name? As a stranger, and they're saying, a baby comes to you, what's your name? You tell him, you tell him, you tell him your name. That's your downfall. Now if I came to you, and, I, and you don't know me, and I said to you, what's your name? You tell me, get lost. Right? But when you, but because you give them authority, you think they've got authority, you tell them the truth. Now, we don't lie, but I understand now how to tweak my mind to what they're doing to us. You know what I mean? So, when, like what you just said, when they came to the door, they came to my door, asked for me, Mr. let's say Mr. L, and the man's looking at you, he don't know you. So, if a man's knocked your door, and he's asked for you, looking you in your face, he don't know you, why are you going to say, it's me? The reason you're probably going to say that is because you think he's going to give you some money or something or there's some advantage for you. Well, there ain't no advantage for you because the only people that's gonna knock your door, if they know you, they know you, and you're gonna recognize them straight away. So when someone comes to your door and you do not recognize them and they're asking for a name, especially when they put Miss or Mr. in front of it, like my brother just said there, I just said, um, I don't recognize that name, sorry, and I shut the door. Now they might knock the door again, and I've got nothing more to say. Because if a stranger knocks your door, and you said, I don't know who you're looking for. You shut the door, it's done, isn't it? But we got this curiosity thing of wanting to know. I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. That's our problem. That's our problem. And also with the straw man, there's, there's, they need your agreement. They need your agreement to, to put the thing into action. The straw man is an artificial uh, company set up in your name. So they need, your, they need your agreement to give them the authority. So as a king, they're asking you, as king, they're asking you your name. Are as king asking your name. So basically, this, they need your agreement to, to activate this storm. 
So the first step, as I said, if we recognize it's a belief system and do not respond to recognition. Um, sorry, what was the question directly again? They just asked that. I don't want to go off track. It was about the how the straw man can save people money. How, how we can understand the straw man. So we don't have to pay council tax rates. And certain, uh, certain, things. certain things like the project. Yeah. Which we want to get more information out of you. Yeah. 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 So, okay. but we, you so, so, so um, one of the first things, uh, just simply go onto the internet and just type in um, accepted for value yeah so basic accepted for value yeah so basically what that is is um, when you get a bill so we've already so we've had people explaining that the, the bill the word bill don't even make sense like so with your fine um, with your council tax bill the definition of a bill is actually um, uh, to be itemized. So if the bill's not, if, if something's not itemized, it can't be a bill because you have to accept that those is what you purchased and that's the bill for what you're paying for. Yeah? So the council tax isn't legal. It's not legal because it comes under the Finance Act, which um, again, Acts of Parliament don't actually make sense. But I'm just trying to give you things that you can do directly. So accepting for value. If you've got bailiffs, that are knocking your door and bothering you, you can um, do something called um, uh, denied rights of access. Yeah, so basically, like you say, if someone comes to your door, the reason why they can come to your door is because they have an implied right to come to your door. Any person can come and knock your door and that's legal. But if you give a company and you notify them, as we were talking about notifications, if you notify someone and they don't respond to you, then it's like basically saying, if I know this brother, if, if I'm talking about this brother and I make an allegation about him and he knows I've made an allegation about him but he doesn't um, rebut or defend himself about what I've said, what I'm saying must be true because I'm saying about him and he knows I'm saying it. So when you get a parking ticket and they're saying, ah, you parked in an illegal place, they're, they're notifying you that you need to basically do something and if you leave it, which means that you ain't responded to it, that means that you're liable. So the worst thing you could do in any kind of these situations that you get involved in is to leave it and bury your head because they'll let the bill go up and up and up. And you see that the council, they're sneaky because what a parking ticket could be like today, in less than three months, two months, the bill's ridiculous, it's gone bailiff and you're in a lot of trouble now. So, yeah, you have to get a bit more smart with how we're kind of getting into things. Respond to them. You write a letter and put them on notice and say to them, I, I take away your um, implied rights of access. So right there, they're not allowed to come to your house. So when you go into things like that, you go into like levy fees. So like you can do this against police and judges and everything, like, but case is dismissed. So there's a lot, there is a lot, yeah? But what I'm saying to you is stop contracting with the people. That's the best thing. Sorry. Question. Hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, apologies. It's just the last question. So I, I just want yeah. to. No, no, I hope that helps. Last question. I've got to make your points brief because we are like short on time. Come in, bro. Sorry, last question. Um, yeah. A lot of what, look, a lot of what we're learning now, I'm, I'm really just starting to appreciate the term straw man. Still don't know anything really about it. Um, a lot of what we're learning, we're learning now, at the age that we are now. My question is, how do we, how would you explain to the younger generation, I'm talking, you know, the 10 to 15 year olds, the pros and cons of the straw man, the concept of the straw man, and how to apply that in their lives? I'm, I'm going to say this quick, I'm going to say my piece quick. I think personally, if we used to all stop crime, stop crime, then their system wouldn't be able to, um, to, to function. Without crime, they, their whole system collapses, yeah? Everything that they've built up is around crime. They strive, yeah? That's why you see all the violence and whatever on TV, because they're hoping that our youth them will pick up that culture, like you were saying, cult, for them to be cultivated. They're cultivating our youth them on a mass level to be able to do certain things that benefit them and keep us down. Yeah, and as, as time goes on, even down to this, even down to what we're talking about right now, 
I just, just sorry, I found something yesterday that basically is my loophole to start discharging things. So I'm now going to try and buy a car on HP and I'm going to discharge it. Um, you think I'm joking? Okay, so, yeah. See, but it's what I'm saying, and it's laughing, but this is, and this is real. Yeah? Okay. Uh, I can just briefly go to the principal. Very quickly. Very quickly. Oh, hold on, hold on. Do you want to remind them of the question so you can answer it? Yeah. You want to practice? Yeah, you've got to find, you've got to answer this. Yeah, go. Do you want to remind them of the question? Go on, then. Yes, yeah, so it's really how, how you explain the concept of the straw man to the younger generation so they can understand that to ensure, you know, some of the things that you're challenging the system on, they fully understand that and they can work their way around it. Well, well from my angle, it's, it's you, have to, you have to know, you have to get them to understand the legal fiction and understand legally. So a quick breakdown is a line because they say they master the lines, makes you align with things. Align means you you're working in a formation. So basically, when you work, when you, every line that they do is designed to make you work in a formation. Inside the word line is what they're really hiding. The word line is L-I-N-E. It really is N-I-L-E, Nile. So every line gives you the sound of lying. Line means to align you, to make you work in a formation. Hidden in the world, not nile, is where everything really comes from. Line is N-I-L, denial. So everything comes from the word, from the nile, it's hidden in the word line. And they're, try, they're in denial of where everything comes from. So once you understand the, the sound of the words and etymology of the words, you know the true meaning. So once you can do that, then you, you can get them to, to do that. My, my son, he's 14, he's, he got his A-level in, in the English at 14 through the mastery of the word. Respect. Okay. No, 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 no. We've got to restart over there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we've got to close it down now. You can't answer the question. Okay. We're going to be the to a close now. I know many people have some other questions want to ask, but little time challenges. If I come out late, the many quiet kids and keep my deposit. So, you know. So let's reach my be quiet time. So what's going to take place now? Come, give the panel a clap, please. Come, give my clap, give my clap, please. Yeah. We have a short break for about 10 minutes. Right, then we'll talk about everything about the role of parenting, get intervention. Also, we'll do our special guest who will be speaking as well. So please um, circle around about 10, 15 minutes, right, while we get ourselves organized. Come on, give us a cup again. Quick, 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 quick.